Hey everybody, I'm only going to be out here a few minutes and I just want to read this passage here. Scripture passage, chapter 14 of Ezekiel. And it talks about how three men, Noah, Daniel, and Job, were in it. They were here in this world and they went through similar temptations or same temptations as anyone else. And that they were saved, that they were delivered from the coming judgment or from the wrath of God through their own righteousness. And let me just start at the beginning. It says, then a certain man, a certain, then came certain of the elders of Israel unto me and sat before me. And the word of the Lord came saying unto me, saying, son of man, these men have set up their idols in their heart and put the stumbling block of the iniquity before their face. Should I be inquired of all at, of at all by them? Therefore speak unto them and say unto them, Thus says the Lord God, Every man of the house of Israel that sets up his idols in his heart and puts the stumbling block of his iniquity before his face and comes to the prophet, I the prophet will answer him and come that comes according to to the multitude of his idols that it may that I may take the house of Israel that I may take the house of Israel in their own heart because they are all estranged from me through their idols idols can be anything right idols could be idols of men idols of women there could be idols of gold idols of silver your your pet can be your idol your job can be your idol. Anything can be our idol. Um, our children can be our idol. Right? So therefore say unto the house of Israel, Thus says the Lord, God, repent and turn yourselves from your idols and turn away your faces from all your abominations. The abominations can be using drugs, eating certain foods that we shouldn't eat, um, certain practices that we do, I'm saying we as a human beings, cursing, those different things, um, and, you know, the, 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 the typical basic things, immorality, you know, for every one of the house of Israel or of the stranger that sojourns in Israel, which separates himself from me and sets up his idols in his heart and puts the stumbling block of his, of his iniquity before his face and comes to a prophet to inquire of him concerning me, I, the Lord, will answer him by myself and I will set up my face against that man and will make him a sign in the proverb and I will cut off him from the midst of my people and you shall know that I am the Lord. And if the prophet be deceived, when he has spoken a thing, I, the Lord, have deceived that prophet, and I will stretch out my hand upon him and will destroy him from the midst of my people, Israel. You see how he's so concerned about Israel? Some people say that it doesn't matter what your nationality is. It doesn't matter. All can be saved. We all know that God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, that whomsoever believes on him should not perish but have we ever everlasting life. But first, the apple of his, of his eye is to be saved because salvation comes through the Jews. Correction comes to the house of God first. So, I'm going to continue on. It says, and they shall bear the punishment of their iniquity. The punishment of the prophet shall be even as the punishment of him that seeks unto him that the house of Israel may go no more astray from me, neither pollute, neither be polluted by any, any more with all their transgressions. Some people are thieves and murderers and all kind of things, you know, that we have to be delivered from, purged from these different spirits, these different, the sins of the fathers that are on the children up to the third generation. You know, you wonder why you may have some habits or some desires that you do that your parents did or your grandparents or you wonder where certain things that's concerning our heart 
that we have a desire for, we wonder where that came from. It is um, something that has been passed down. And some things people probably adopt on their own, you know, certain trans transgressions. Um, although there's nothing new under the sun, but still, you, you understand what I'm saying. Um, that the house of Israel may go no more astray from me, neither be polluted any more with their transgressions, but that they may be my people and I may be their God, says the Lord God. The word of the Lord came again to me, saying, Son of man, when the land sins against me by trespassing grievously, then, then will I sin, will I stretch out my hand upon it, and will break the staff of bread thereof, and will send famine upon it, upon it, and will cut off man and beast from it. Though these three men, Noah, Daniel, and Job, were in it, they should deliver but their own souls by their righteousness, says the Lord God. If I cause a noisome beast to pass through the land, and they spoil it so that it be desolate, that no man may pass through because of the beast, Though these three men were in it, as I live, says the Lord, God, they shall deliver neither sons nor daughters. They only shall be delivered, but the land shall be desolate. Because you see how, you know, mankind, men are made in the image of God. They're first. The men are first. This word right here, the scriptures is to the man first, because Christ is the head over man, right? Continuing to 17, or if I bring a sword upon the land and say, sword, go through the land so that I cut off man and beast from it. Though these three men were in it, as I live, says the Lord God, they shall deliver neither sons nor daughters, but they only shall be delivered themselves. Or if I send a pestilence into the land and pour out my fury upon it and blood or to cut off from it man and beast. Though Noah, Daniel, and Job were in it, as I live, says the Lord God, they shall deliver neither sons nor daughters. They shall but deliver their own souls by their righteousness. For thus says the Lord God, how much more when I send my four sore judgments upon Jerusalem, the sword and the famine and the noisome beasts and the pestilence that cut off from it man and beast, Yet behold, even in that time, even in this time, when he sends his judgments, he says, yet behold, therefore shall be left a remnant. He's going to save some people because the people that are waiting for him, looking for him, we're looking for Christ's return. We're looking for his return. Yet behold, therein shall be left a remnant that shall be brought forth, both sons and daughters, Behold, they shall come forth unto you, and you shall see their way and their doings, and you shall be comforted concerning the evil that I have brought upon Jerusalem, even concerning all that I have brought upon it. So that means that your sons and your daughters are going to come unto you parents, and you need to be open unto your children, because he's trying to save your children, so you have to... Show mercy and some grace to your children. Because he says, they shall come forth unto you, and you shall see their doings, and, their, and you shall be comforted concerning the evil that I have brought upon Jerusalem, even concerning all that I have brought upon it. And they shall comfort you when you see their ways and their doings. And you shall know that I have done, I have not done without cause all that I have done in it says the Lord. That's Ezekiel chapter 14. As I minister to you, oh, I minister to myself. This life, it can hurt us so that we feel like there's nothing left. So no matter how you or I feel, let's read this word so we can be healed. Let's speak over ourselves, encourage ourselves in the Lord. Whoa, ho, ho, whoa, ho, ho. Amen.